Thanks, Michael. And again, uh, it's a great privilege to be at VEAT this year. So I run a large system of 13 hospitals. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight as we go along this because um, the other speakers did a great job giving you the actual data. But I'm going to talk to you about the step-by-step -step te technical tips for pharmacomechanical intervention for PE. We used to just call this catheter directed thrombolysis. These are my conflicts, kind of probably most devices. Um, as you've already seen, I don't know if I was sitting out in that crowd, if I didn't work at a big tertiary care center, what I'd be thinking right now. Oh my gosh. I mean, how many different devices are there? They're talking, some of them are 24 French, and I'm going to go through the right heart. If I'm a vascular surgeon, I got to be going, no way. Because that's a lot. I mean, cardiologists get kind of squeamish about doing that. So what are we really looking at from a catheter-based standpoint? Well, we're hopefully going to have a methodology for treating patients that more, is more uniformly accessible to even our community hospitals so that we can take these patients that may need to be treated and can't wait for transfer and be treated. And two of those, as already, uh, Rob already talked about, are a bland catheter, means a catheter with side holes, or kind of like that hose that's in your garden that just kind of waters all your different plants versus ultrasound guided. The benefits of pharmacothrombolysis are small access, traditional size casters, right heart and pulmonary artery, and certainly more universally available skill sets throughout the nation. When to utilize it? Well, certainly if you have a patient that has, as you've already heard, massive PE that has contraindication to full dose lytic or maybe even a half dose lytic, Submassive elevated risk is a question that you continue to hear us ask about. One that nobody's mentioned is that locked lung. I really hate to have patients that get an infarcted lung because there's no blood flow to that lung, even though they look okay. But don't be frozen by indecision. I don't know about you guys, but I oftentimes will get phone calls from the ER, and they'll go, we've got a PE, not, not quite in shock, but they're pretty borderline. I'll go, listen, go ahead and give them thrombolitis, because you're about 90 minutes away from our institution. Get them that, and then get them over here. And they go, I'm not real comfortable giving thrombolysis for a PE. And I go, you do realize their mortality right now is about four times that for an inferior ST elevation MI, and you're really doing the patient a benefit. So be quiet, give them the thrombolytics, I'll take responsibility and send them up. But certainly, you, you, the, 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 many patients with hypotension, amino RV, and biomarkers just aren't getting this. If you look at utilization of thrombolysis, this is before we had these big thrombectomy devices, because look at the years. But we were seeing a decrease in utilization. Whoops, I want to go back, sorry. Oh, whatever. This is before we were seeing these mechanical devices. We're seeing a decrease in thrombolytic usage. Thank you. There you go. I mean, what are we thinking? It blows my mind in this day and age of increased medical education and literature support. If you look at the patients that really had unst were unstable in this uh, American Journal of Medicine article from way back in 2012, if they were unstable and they didn't get thrombolytic therapy, they had a pretty bad um, uh, mortality rate versus those that got thrombolytic therapy. This is why we're giving systemic thrombolysis in the first place. This message has to get out there. And these patients, there's a, I really think of it almost like trauma. The ones that really need it can't wait for a helicopter. They need to get it now. So why treat some massive elevated risk PE? As you see, it's a very controversial uh, issue. But PE and unresolved RV dysfunction at discharge is a bad thing. So we have to figure out that population because they have more PE, they have higher mortality rate. But the other thing that we might be doing that nobody's talking about in their trials, at least not up front, is how long are they in the hospital? This is a diagnosis or disease process that affects multiple age groups. How fast we get them back to work? How fast we get them back to normal? Because that be, can be very cost effective. Um, certainly there's quick resolution of symptoms. There should be less utilization of ICU and the cost there. Decreased need for therapy advancement, that's already been proven. Accelerated discharge, well certainly if we come up with protocols, we will do that. These patients are very stable very quickly and should be able to go home very quickly. And again, accelerated turn to asymptomatic state. 
what else can be done. I mean, we all talk about these things, but I've seen actually a reverse trend where even patients that are really sick and have significant DVT aren't getting IVC filters. The pendulum, this happens in medicine and everything we do. The pendulum is starting to swing too far the other way. As I say at most conferences, I've seen more patients die from lack of IVC filter than I have from an IVC filter that was left in. Get them out, then you get all the benefit. But patients that are unstable have residual clot in their iliac veins or in their IVC, these patients should be protected. Treated medically as well, but protected. But also, we have great surgeons who can do embolectomy if they need to or with the new devices. So certainly there's been meta-analyses that have demonstrated promise of catheter thrombolysis. The question has already been brought up is, and one of my partners says is, well, can't I just give it in their IV? I don't know. That's a good question. But right now, we're at an educational standpoint. So I'll, when I go to my how I do it, I'll tell you why and all those kind of things. But make the diagnosis and make it consistently. Really join PERT, get a consistent algorithmic treatment and mechanism in your hospital. Hospital environment may dictate the options, tertiary versus a community. I mean, I might use, you know, a big suction catheter, 24 French in my, my hospital, but I'm not going to have that done in my system at the small community hospital when the guy's going to do it once or twice a year. Now you're asking for trouble. Have a STEMI-like protocol. I think we have, just like PERT's doing that, we have to get these and, and not only be consistent with our diagnoses, but what really time matters too. We need to get this done in a timely fashion. Now the question is catheter versus ECOS. I think right now there's institutional preference. As Rob said, we don't have any randomized data. And there's really big cost considerations. These things are really expensive. So risk benefit, so decrease the risk of the procedure. What's the risk? Systemic, systemic bleeding. So that means proper patient selection and control the blood pressure. Sometimes I'll review cases where somebody had a bleed and you think, oh my gosh, the blood pressure was 190 over 110 in the ICU and they were leaving it like that. They were more focused on the patient. Local bleeding, ultrasound guided access. I mean, if you look at the guidelines, one of the reasons they say don't do things is because of bleeding. Get less bleeding by being better. I know we do it on arterial, but you should be doing it on venous too. It's not just a vein. There's lots of vessels through that common femoral area or even the jugular. Um, proper transfer techniques, don't let the patient move over on themselves and sedate them appropriately in the beds when they do have these catheters long term. Arrhythmia, well that's your catheter skills or versus float in the swan. Overdosing of lytic, I'm really a big advocate that we have to do a much better job of measuring our hemodynamics early on. I think we can really dramatically change how we treat these patients, just as been alluded to um, previously and not being able to handle advancing therapy. If you get a patient and they're that massive and you get them the systemic thrombolysis, but you don't have the ability to do other stuff, now you get them out of your hospital because then get them to a tertiary care hospital where they have thoracic surgery or thrombectomy procedures that they can do. Do you want to get the patient back from the edge? Catheter-directed thrombolysis, again, potentially a bland catheter. Uh, you already heard a little bit about dosing, but usually we don't want to exceed one milligram per hour. Minimize the length of infusion, longer, longer exposures as well as higher dose leads to increased bleeding and, and actually medical errors. A lower time with concomitant ther heparin therapy. If you're given full dose heparin, you really want to back off your time if you can. As already has been shown, MAPIT and MOPIT looked at full dose and half dose TPA and actually looked like there was no decrease, so we should be looking at decreasing our thrombolytic um, dosing. For ECOS, um, great device, you leave it in there. It's expensive though, so we have to look about this, and you're usually using them bilaterally. Um, you already saw the trial data, so I'm getting low on time, so I'm not gonna go back over that. That was already done very well by Rob. Um, we actually use TNK, no data, okay, FDA off-label. Um, we, used, um, we used very low-dose TNK, and when I get to my next lecture, I'll show you why. Um, but there was increased intracranial risk when you use full-dose TNK versus TPA. So what are you, when are you done with halytic? I think it's hemodynamics. It's about your PA pressures, heart rate, supplemental oxygen requirement. If they've got a lock lung, maybe looking at another CTPA. Bleeding, 
groin or or other, you're probably going to stop it. In summary, develop a program and know your results. Help develop the data. Try to maximize benefit while decreasing risk. And in uncomfortable, get the patient to a higher level institution. Thank you very much.